everyone, this is Tobias Forge. You're listening to Drunk in a Graveyard. everybody put down your crack pipes and beer bongs because you're listening to the drunk in a graveyard podcast my name's robin i'm scott and this week we have like a special episode for you and i think this is going to be kind of one of the first times that on the podcast we're including an interview with basically someone other than us yeah and someone who's like arguably much more famous than us i think he might be yes Marginally. Uh, marginally. So, of course, we're talking about Tobias Forge, the mastermind, the man behind the plastic mask in Ghost, or Ghost BC, as they were called for, like... That was a weird year. <laughs> I think that was, like, 2016. 2016, there was clowns. Ghost was Ghost BC. Everything was popping off. Donald Trump became the president. I don't know. Dark times all around. Yeah, dark-sided information. I mean, it's... I wish we kind of got those clowns again. I mean, just wait till Halloween. It's going to be fucking Pennywise. Apparently clowns are linked to like, I was looking into this the other night, the like phantom clown phenomena is linked to like election years and stuff like that. It's super bizarre. What the fuck do you do when I'm not here? Look up clowns. That's what I do. <sighs> do, 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 do. Yeah, no, it's because it's like a break from the news cycle sort of thing. And so everybody just focuses on it. And then that's why they resurged in 2016. Because huh. it's like a group think thing. Okay. Look it up. It happened in 81. <laughs> well, I mean, I believe you. So recently I was given the privilege to talk to Tobias Forge, have a phone interview with him. And we chatted about all sorts of stuff. We talked about weed, uh, Zardoz, uh, why kitties are the best, being afraid of the dark. And, That's a weird admission. Yeah, and Cardinal Copia's idea of the perfect date. So I've actually already uploaded this as a slideshow on the YouTube channel, but I recognize that not everyone uses YouTube or is a fan of, like, watching videos or things like that. I mean, sometimes with me, personally, I just will put on a YouTube video and listen to it. I'm not, like, actively watching it. But I recognize that not everyone's going to do that. So we're kind of doubling up this week for content. But I feel like it's it's cool enough to do because it's... It's a cool interview. I like I like how we set up our interviews. Like, not to smell my own farts or anything like that, but um, it's different than the, like, tell me about the origins of Prequel. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. We're going to play that for you guys this week. We will not have a normal, regular, standard movie review podcast this week. Um, yeah, we're going out of town to Fright Night, so we're going to be... Possibly dying in haunted houses in Vancouver. So you guys get to listen to Tobias Forge and, and ghost things while we're doing other ghost things. But we will return to our regularly scheduled Drunk in a Graveyard film review bullshit next week. So tune in for that. And until then, enjoy this interview with Tobias Forge. Hey there. Hey. Hi, Tobias. Hey. How are you? Hi. So my name is Robin. Um, I run the publication Drunk in a Graveyard uh, based in Canada. How are you doing? Very well. Very well, thank you. Watching History in the Making on TV, which is interesting. Oh, perfect. So I wanted to get started by saying that we're huge Ghost fans at our website. Um, we first heard of you guys in 2011-ish, so we've been along for the ride with you guys for close to 10 years. We've seen you perform in some very small venues. Back in the day, the costumes were a little bit more homemade. Um, and we just saw you guys perform in Penticton, British Columbia on Saturday. And to see you guys go from this smaller venue, playing maybe a 25 minute set, opening for like uh, Opeth and Mastodon, um, to this big arena rock show, I had read in an earlier interview with you guys where you had said that you wanted Ghost to be this like arena rock band that everyone had kind of missed out on. What's it like to sort of see that realized now? Uh, amazing. <laughs> it was it, it was actually kind of um, I had this moment or had moments of 
um, because of of what I do and constantly sort of being tossed between uh, playing shows but also thinking a lot ahead like I am I am uh, you know I'm fairly creative and and uh, and um, think a lot about the future so in my head it's like I have to remind myself that it's like 2019 uh, because in my head it's like 2020 21 22 that that's where I am at like I'm, I'm thinking about what we're doing in August 22 um, and uh, after or during the Metallica tour in the summer where you know we, we were sort of uh, as, as much as that was a tour that that was a you know dream come true, uh, phenomenal moments of of rock and roll splendor, like playing in front of fucking eighty thousand people, great, you know, fucking cool. And oh, Metallica is here, and they're like good buddies, you know, <laughs> all that shit, like uh, fantastic. But still, like from from a from a production standpoint, we were sort of sidetracking uh, because. It, previously in this, in this album cycle, you know, the we've, we've I've been very adamant about presenting a show, whereas that show was obviously completely altered for the setting of the Metallica tour. Like, uh, not only was it outdoors, it was also in summer, uh, and oh, by the way, the, the their stage doesn't have a roof, so <laughs> you can't hang hang anything. Oh, okay, that's interesting curveball, you know. Um, you need to sort of refigure the whole thing. Um, and by the end of the tour, you know, just because there was just a few months left of the year, there there were a few, just a few months left of the year, and and um, in my head, we were already sort of wrapping the tour because we do one show in February, but that that's we sort of wrap around Christmas. And uh, you know, I had to sort of remember like oh but it's not just a few shows that we're doing after metallica we're doing like the biggest tour we've ever done uh oh yeah all right oh we have six trucks we've never had six trucks before you know you, you, because everything with metallica was so big you know the crowds were huge and the the the, the stadiums were humongous and you know the the, the 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 amount of trucks standing outside the stadiums every day was, you know, thirty, forty. I have no idea. It was so many that it was insane. So everything felt so intimate after that. So going back on the tour now was just like, wow, it's amazing how your perspectives change just because we did this, <laughs> this summer tour with Metallica. Everything was so, uh, you know, this was sort of you know the Metallica tour was such a traffic diverter you know, in, in town, you know, people, every time that we got into a city, you know, the whole city was sort of metallic, metallic out. And, you know, there was Metallica playing everywhere and in and, and radios and, and the street. If you walk down the street, there were people walking in Metallica shirts the day before the show. Um, so, it, but it's, it's interesting because you, 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 I think that's a way to grow into, doing things like what you saw as well, that um, I remember a few times when we when we sort of accidentally did arena shows back in time, and I'm not talking very long time ago at all, I'm talking like just like before, uh, last album cycle and before that. It was such a big jump. Uh, you know, if you come with a sort of essentially a club, uh, club production venue, a theater production into an arena, and all of a sudden they, you know, um, all of a sudden there's a built stage and you put your shit on, and all of a sudden the, the whole production looks so tiny, and mm-hmm. you notice immediately like, oh shit, our our light rig is like it's not is not made for. Um, you know, when you play theaters, everything is through a proscenium. Every, all, the, all the things you're doing is sort of shot through the proscenium of the theater. Um, so it's kind of one, 1D, one in a way, 2D, I guess. 
Uh, whereas, uh, and even though even though you're not playing 360 arenas where people are around the stage, it's definitely more of a 3D vibe. You have to sort of reach out sideways and up ways, and and it's a different um, setting. And if you, if you don't come ready with that for that, you you, you definitely will sort of end up being a little lost on the stage because it feels like there's people everywhere and the stage is so much bigger. I remember just just when we did the fall tour last year and we did three shows on our arenas, which was the Forum in LA, we played at Barclays Center in, in um, Brooklyn, and we did um, uh, an, an arena in Montreal. So we had the same stage set up just for those three shows. And the body came into a shock because it was just like those added meters of running um, completely like pumped you because you, you were so used to the theater that formation and all of a sudden you have to run from one place to the other side which is just you know almost twice as long <laughs> oh, you know we're out of shape <laughs> is that why you added the little mini tricycle oh yeah <laughs> For my stamina, yeah, that's that's uh, you know that's my little spinning pass there. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was like a saw reference to that film or what was going on there, but I loved it. Good, that's the point. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right, so with the seven inches of satanic panic um, and the video and song, kiss the go go goat. Um, there's a little bit of a return to some of the comedy and humor and silliness that what originally attracted at least myself to Ghost. I feel like if the costuming was paired with like such a heavy metal, like a really scary black metal sound, it might not have the same impact. So where does that like silliness come from for you? Where does that comedy come from? I don't know. I mean, I, I just want to have fun. Uh, I think that uh, every band, most bands that I know of or like a lot have always had a certain certain amount of, of humor and sort of tongue-in-cheek attitude into what they're doing. I mean, without turning into, like, the Dickies or anything, where everything is just fun. But, um, I mean, even Metallica, if, if you look at, like, most of their band photos, uh, at least from, like, 84 and onwards, they were all, like, smiling and they were laughing and they were doing silly things. It's kind of unserious. Um, which I think is very cool. I, I mean, that, that, that gave me very much like a lighter, um, even like look at a lot of photos of Pink Floyd. Um, they were obviously a very serious band. If you put that records on, they felt very serious as you grow older you hear the jokes in there. Um, and, uh, but then you look at photos of the band and they were like, also like doing crazy stuff. And, and another band that I, I, I definitely think that some people, especially the people I all, who aren't necessarily real fans and maybe some fans that are just too precious, they sort of miss out on the fact that Morrissey and Smiths was actually hilarious. There's a lot of jokes in that their music. Oh very yes, humor, yeah. It's very playful. And but it's it's wrapped in in a way that sort of sounds extremely serious and, and, and highbrow. But that is also part of the fun of it. Um so that that that, that those were just a few examples of, of bands that I like that, that sort of combine seriousness seriousness with with um yeah. Real, real, you know, humor. Um, <laughs> okay. So, okay. I think it's important. I think it's very important. You know, if if you're if you're capturing people, you're asking them to spend a few hours with you. I think it's definitely important to um, to to go through several emotions um, together. And I want people to come to our show and have fun. And I want them to laugh, and I want them to cry tears of joy. And 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 also rock out. You know. Well, I think that definitely happened um, at this past Saturday's show, at least for us. Um, so my next question, 
Ghost has always had like some sexual themes present in the lyrics. Um, and lately, Cardo Copia, he seems pretty horny. There was some talk about tickling taints, uh, lots of pelvic thrusting. Uh, what What's going on there? Why is the Cardinal so horny? I don't know. Really, uh, I have a vague remembrance of of uh, Papa Three being kind of similar, and uh, I don't think that the tittle, the the tittle, uh, the cane uh, tickling started now. Really, it was, it's been going on for a while. So that I mean, that might suggest that he's been horny for quite a long time. Maybe that's why. I mean, that's fair. So my next question then is, what would be the Cardinal's idea of a perfect date? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I can just imagine. Uh, foreplay, probably, what would that be, like turning on or off lights? Um, definitely socks on. <laughs> um and uh, but then he, I, I think he'd do it grandly and, and thoroughly to 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 the satisfaction of of, of all three, you know. Or four. Okay. I mean, I think that's fair. Okay. But that, that's so... my guess. I don't know. I, I I have never seen him in action, so. <laughs> okay. So. Part of what we do with Drunken and Graveyard is we like to have a little fun in our interview. So we do something called the lightning round. So I'm going to give you two uh, options, and you just pick the first one that appeals to you, okay? Okay. So puppies or kitties? Oh, kitties. Okay. Daffodils or daisies? What was that? Daffodils or daisies? Uh, daisies. Okay. Red wine or white wine? Red wine, without a doubt. <laughs> Coffee or tea? Coffee. Digital or analog? Um, that depends on what, what I'm, I'm trying to do, but yeah, generally analog. Okay. Whiskey or beer? What was the first? Whiskey. What is that? Uh, like a hard liquor? Oh, okay. Uh, I I go. Uh, I'm a beer guy. If I drink, if okay. I have to drink, I, I drink beer. Okay, tits or ass? What? <laughs> tits or ass? Tits or ass? Yes. Oh, um, uh, ass probably. Yeah. Okay, black metal or death metal? Um. Black metal, I'd probably say. Yeah. Okay, Sabbath or Motorhead? Um, if I had to choose, I'd probably go with Sabbath. Okay, Mayhem or Dark Throne? Mayhem. Okay, Slasher movie or Haunted House movie? Uh, I am terribly afraid of the dark. So I'm I'm uh, usually haunted house movies get me a little um, shaky, especially if it's like a new film because they're 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 just um, I know this is supposed to be an easy like one or two but I just need to sort of give you a little background. I just feel better if I see a slasher movie because it's so silly. Whereas if it's like a new Especially all those new horror films, I, I I basically hate most of them, just because it's just filled with jump scares all the time, and there's no like relaxation a little bit. Oh, here we can be safe. It's always like everything is horrible all the fucking time, from start to finish, and then it's like over. And that's none none of the historical horror films that everyone likes. The ones that are critically acclaimed are like that. There's always moments of relaxation, even in the most disturbing films, even in The Shining or in Silence of the Lambs. Or Jaws has a ton of nice moments. And that's what, that dynamic is something that I'm really, really fucking vouching for when it comes to filmmaking. It's very important. 
See, I definitely agree. Um, one of our catchphrases on our website is that jump scares are ruining horror films. Okay. <laughs> So that's going to take us to our last question. So the website that I run is called Drunk in a Graveyard. We cover horror films, heavy metal, and we do it kind of with a silly, comedic, intoxicated bent. So we ask this question of everyone we interview. Please give us a horror movie recommendation as well as the drink or intoxicant of choice you would pair with it. It's kind of like a like a wine and meal pairing, if you would. Oh, okay. Then I have a perfect... This is not a horror film, but still definitely in the cult section that most horror films would dig. Um, if you've never seen it before, which I... It, it's sort of like... It doesn't... It, it's not a prerequisite, but but it, it helps if you've never seen it before. Um, you should... Pick up a film called Sardos, and it's a film starring Sean Connery, early 70s. He is just sort of, he's just out of the Bond world, so he's a big shot. And the reason why some people, maybe not in this forum, but generally people don't know of this film is because I think that they have tried to kill it many times. It's not as good as they probably wanted it to be. It was a very, it's a sci-fi film. Um, I've had many debates with buddies of mine uh, arguing about uh, if the script and the story is actually good or bad. Uh, I don't really know. I, I just know that if you smoke a doobie, not telling you to do it or anything, but if you do, you should watch this film. And you have to imagine, and this is a little experiment, imagine, you know how a film is made, obviously, that it's not done in a chronological order. You know, each scene is like, they might have started with the end scene or the scene in the middle or whatever. You have to imagine that each scene, each new scene that you see, is Sean Connery's first or last scene that he does before he loses his temper. So you have to remember that he just came out of wardrobe looking like he does in the film. Please Google Sean Connery in Sardos. That's what he looks like coming out of wardrobe. He hasn't read one single line in the script. So each scene that you see, you will have to imagine that being his first, where he doesn't know what the story is about. You will die <laughs> of laughter because that that film is so nonsensical. I mean, nonsensical that it it's absolutely. Uh, if 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 he went through that film not knowing the script. It, it, it's an hilarious film. It's it's that makes it one of my favorite films. I guess you should see it because it's it, it, the film itself is not good. It's cool. <laughs> it's a cool film. I love it, but not for the reasons that they intended it for to be loved. I'm I'm familiar with the film. Yes, I, I would agree. But if if you do it with a in it, with a little THC in it, it's like woof. <laughs> you will have an uh, evening. That you might not remember, but <laughs> it's phenomenal. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for that. Thank you for talking with us. It was such a pleasure to see you guys live. I think this was our fifth time that we've seen you. It was my second time taking photographs for you. We're, we're huge fans, and it was so um, – I felt so proud to see the show that you guys are touring now. It was so awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, a little, just a little greeting to to Vancouver as well. Just saying, or Penticton. I don't know if you you're from Vancouver or Penticton. I'm actually from a small town that's about four hours from Vancouver and about two from Penticton. What was that then? 
Uh, the town is called Kamloops. Oh, Kamloops. I've had a day off there. I know about that place. Either way, we intend to come sooner rather than later back to, maybe not to Kamloops, but into the area. I'm sorry for taking so long. That's all good. We look forward to seeing you guys again. Um, I would love to take photographs for you guys again. I got some amazing photographs um of you i think just beautiful um so if you can check out our website i feel like you would appreciate it but no pressure obviously i will thank you yeah thank you so much for talking to me tobias thank you thank you have a bye good bye. day bye you too bye Okay, well, that was a fun interview. I had a ton of fun talking to Tobias. I think he's honestly just one of the nicest people. He was so uh, personable. And that conversation got weird. I feel like I feel like we understood each other on, like, a level. Like, like Zardoz. Oh, yeah, you cracked him open like a walnut. Yeah. Like uh, a well, apparently... Rubber mask walnut. <laughs> um, apparently, the Zardoz thing is something he tells a lot of people, but not to, like, that level. Mm-hmm. And then, like, a lot of interviewers kind of, like, have glossed over that. I, know I that gloss you... over that. That's the focal point. Because a lot of people probably haven't seen it. That's and a fair. lot of people are stupid and yeah. boring. And I am not. So, yes. Anyways, um, thank you again. <laughs> Tobias, if you're listening to this, I don't know. You'd have to be kind of, like, a bit of a weirdo to, like, sit and listen to your own interviews, I think. Yeah, it's a psycho. A bit of a psycho move. I mean, whatever. Um, So if you're listening, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to speak with Tobias. It was such a pleasure to do photos for Ghost at their show. This is the second time I've taken photos for them. It was the fifth time, I think, that I've seen them live in in Penticton. It was an amazing show. And if you have the chance to catch them on this tour, the ultimate tour named Death, honestly recommend it. It's an amazing arena rock show. Like, you will not be disappointed. And even if you don't necessarily like Ghost all that much, go. You really might surprise yourself. Oh, especially in October. That'd be even better. Yes. Yes, you really, really, really might surprise yourself with it. And thank you as well to Ola for setting it all up. And thank you so much to the staff of the South Okanagan Event Center for their ho- continued hospitality for our level of bullshit. <laughs> like... <laughs> our bullshit's fantastic. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Oh boy. Anyways, thank you guys so much for helping helping make this happen. I look forward to doing more interviews like this. Uh, I noticed that the YouTube video that I, ma- I made for this seems to have like a pretty good response to it. Um, and that's really cool. So hopefully maybe do some more uh, like phone interviews with bands and things like that. I won't always have like the cool pictures to go with them, but still, I thought it was a fun one. So again, thank you so much. And please be sure to check us out online. We are drunk in a graveyard.com. Follow us on all of those social things on Twitter. We are drunk graveyard on Instagram and Facebook. We are drunk in a graveyard. Be sure to check us out over on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash drunk in a graveyard. If you like our podcast, our videos, our website, or anything else we make, and you have a buck or two and you'd like to support us, you can check us out on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash drunk in a graveyard. We do uh, weekly post show chats, and so far we've been talking about the Shutter Creep Show series exclusively over on our Patreon, so be sure to check that out as well. And yeah, until then, if you have ghosts, you have everything, and always, always, always stay spooky. Bye bye.